Hello, I'm John with The Christian Century. I am joined today by Janine Pitas, who recently wrote a review for us about a book by Catherine Hayhoe called Saving Us. So we're gonna chat for a few minutes about that book. Uh, but first, Janine, why don't you let us know a little bit about who you are? Hi everyone, my name is Janine Pitas. I've been freelance writing for The Christian Century for about two years now, and I am, a professor of English and Spanish actually changing positions right at this moment. I've been for seven years at the University of Dubuque in Iowa, and I will be beginning as a professor of English at St. Vincent College in Latro, Pennsylvania this fall. Congratulations on the new job. It's exciting. Thank you. Um, so let's talk about the book is called Saving Us by Catherine Hayhoe. I really liked the review that you wrote on the book and you talked about how heading into the book, you were maybe a little skeptical about how important it is important it is to talk about climate change, which is one of the main points the book is making. Um, did the book change your mind at all about how important it is to, to have conversations about climate change? It really did. It really changed my mind quite a lot. And it's funny because I actually read the book as part of a book group at my current and former workplace, University of Dubuque, there is a character initiative there, and there's a book group for faculty as part of it. So we read the book as a group and talked about it. And talking alone is not going to change anything, but Catherine Hayhoe's point is that that's where it has to start. And she argues that so many people are so overwhelmed by the issue that, and, and there's, especially in the United States, it, there are so many contentious debates around it that people are afraid to talk about it. And she really sees talking about it as the start of facing it, accepting the reality of it, and then deciding how to act. That's great. In the review, you mentioned that she emphasizes finding common ground, which made me think about people having conversations about climate change who disagree profoundly on it, maybe including even deniers of climate change. And I'm curious, is, is that are those kind of conversations possible? Have you experienced um, these kind of conversations about climate? So it's really interesting to learn about Hayhoe's strategy, and I highly recommend that people read the book, or if you don't have time, check out her TED Talk, which I think is just the most important thing you can do to fight climate change, talk about it. That's the title. It's 17 minutes. So if you don't have time for the whole book, the talk is a good sum up uh, that will give you the gist. And she talks about her own experience. She's Canadian and she moved, she's a professor and a scientist at um, in Lubbock, Texas, I believe. So she's really run into some difficulties there. And what she always tries to do is find common ground, um, common values. So she talks about how she was going to be presenting at a Rotary Club and the Rotarians have something called the four-way test. I forget the four ways, but like one is like, is it true? Is it, is it relevant? You know, is it, is it beneficial? I forget what the fourth one is, but like she rearranged her whole talk around that. And she talks about how like, you know, there are ways in to talk about this. Are you an outdoor enthusiast? Um, I know many, many people who are very conservative polit politically, they love hunting, they love fishing, they love visiting national parks, you know? So she urges, find that common ground, find that link there. Maybe um, you're talking to somebody who loves good food and drink. Well, climate change is, it's affecting chocolate, it's affecting wine, it's affecting all sorts of things. Like basically there's no interest that humans have or can have that's not in some way connected to this. So she has found ways to find common ground. For me personally, it's funny because ever since, since 2016 and especially since 2020, um, I've been really interested in the US political divide more broadly speaking because 
my parents and I are on opposite sides of the divide, like starkly. And we're also very close. I'm an only child, so I'm very close to them. So I cannot simply surround myself with people who think like me. I have to engage with, I even hate to say the other side because we've become very tribal and politically there are two sides, but really there are a lot more and there's a lot of room for nuance. Um, climate change, I must say that, you know, I read and, and reviewed this book very recently and I certainly am thinking a lot about it. I mean, I feel like, how can we not talk about it? It's happening before our eyes. Look at this heat wave in Europe right now. Look at the droughts in the US. Look what's happening to Lake Mead, um, which you know supports, provides water for millions of people in the Western US and Mexico going down. It's It's hard for me to understand how people can still deny it, but I think that there are reasons why. And the reasons why are that this issue calls for us to change our way of life drastically, and that's difficult for everyone. So I'm wondering if I think, I mean, I think we definitely need these conversations to try to find, maybe don't go for the most controversial points first, but like, as she suggests, talk about what's the same, you know, whether it's just a love of the outdoors, a love of certain hobbies like hiking, which at least that's something that seems to transcend the political divide, you know, being out in nature, that might be a starting point, I think. Yeah. Well, as bleak as things sometimes look with climate change, one of the themes in this book that relates to Hayhoe's Christian faith is the theme of hope. I was wondering if you could just close by sharing with us um, what role hope might play in, a, in our approaches to climate change? And have you been able to find hope in this area? Yeah, thank you for that question. Hope, I think, is a very difficult and dangerous feeling, even though it's an important one. I mean, in some mythologies, like, for example, the Pandora's box story after all of the suffering and terror is unleashed onto the world, you know, hope is the only thing left in the box. And sometimes I fear that hope can be the only thing that is left after it can seem like all is lost. And hope can also be dangerous. Like think of somebody with a gambling addiction who goes to a casino regularly, hoping that they're going to win and they don't. So if you read the book, like, yes, hope is very important and specifically Christian hope, our hope in Christ and in the resurrection undergirds this whole, whole book and hey -ho's message. However, it is also, I think, just as important for her Christian approach to this subject is responsibility and stewardship and the idea that we are called by Jesus to care for one another, to love one another. You know, that's how Christians are, are supposed to be recognized in the world. And so we have a responsibility to the earth for its own sake, for our roles as stewards, but also for one another and for our children. So hope is very important for sure, but I just want to caution that it can't be an idle hope, it has to be hope that is combined with commitment to solving this problem. Mm. Thank you, Janine. Um, for those of you who are interested in this book and Catherine Hayhoe's work, uh, below in the video description, we will have the link to Janine's review of this book. We can also throw the link down there for the TED Talk by Catherine Hayhoe that Janine mentioned. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Janine. It's great to talk to you. Thank you for having me.